<laughs> Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar uh, on Autodesk BIM 360 solution. Uh, in this webinar, we are going to talk how the BIM 360 can be used for design and coordination, specifically when we are working on this uh, on a project. So this is our follow-up and the second webinar on the series that we are specifically doing for NT uh, site offices. And this session, like what we showcased last time on the infra and rail part, this time we are going to mostly focus on the drawings and, and how we handle drawings in a uh, in a format that we can take around with us in any uh, given time throughout the site and we can communicate to the rest of the team with these drawing data. Now, let's start with this uh, uh, session. So this is mostly on the file coordination. So in case uh, if you have not attended the first uh, webinar, which was last week, uh, early this week, I'm just going to focus why exactly is BIM 360, uh, we are, uh, what is the concept behind this BIM 360 and how we have developed this? Now, the file coordination, again, is a very, uh, uh, um, is a process that ne that needs to get incorporated. And the key area where we felt uh, needs to be improved is the way the files are shared in, in any organization or in, in any process. So earlier, we used to consider a, a simple machine with an installed software, and we used to develop a file out from there. And that file, you, we used to send it across to any, uh, project sites or any vendors and subcontractors to work on that. And this is very much a uh, non-informative, I would say, uh, like a one-way direction. So we just send, send the files across and they just utilize it. And in case if there is anything that they want to do and have to bring that back, uh, information, share it back to the source, they have to share another file with another document sets, which is never been connected uh, throughout uh, to the process now what we are looking with the bim 360 platform is uh, how we can have a common data environment where we can save these files to a centralized model and let everybody access it from wherever and whenever they they need that and we are not changing any the way that projects are designed or the way it has been done on site it's only the storage part which gets uh, updated instead of a c drive or a d drive so what we do is we save that into a centralized cloud BIM 360 services and everyone from the design team who's using say AutoCAD, Revit, Civil 3D, Naviswork, they are going to use uh, to store BIM 360 as a, a sto uh, file storage location. So instead of C drive or D drive and the project folder location, we just go into BIM 360 and save it over there. Now, what this BIM 360 does in the background, it enables the file to have a HTML ready format. Uh, that means the file which gets stored in BIM 360 can now be accessed through any Internet Explorer, Safari, or Chrome that we use. And we have also developed mobile applications uh, which are both supported in Android and iOS. So you can access all the data and the relevant information that are stored in that. <laughs> uh, in a handheld device. Another thing that uh, adds value to this whole process is anything that you wanted to communicate from site or from anywhere while accessing this file, you can mark that or communicate that from your model or from your uh, mobile phone to the team through BIM 360. So it supports many variants like uh, markups, issues, your, your property set, and even it supports IoT connectivity, like if you have a hardware that you need to get it connected, you can have that using a force technology. So now let's see uh, how this BIM 360 was developed over a year. So it's not a very new product for us. It has been developed from quite some time. So initially in 2010 and 12, you would have heard about A360 Drive, which was the first initi initi initiative uh, where uh, we were able to store our Autodesk files onto a, a cloud-based uh, storage. And what this allowed us to do is view or make this file accessible through Internet Explorer. So at any time, if I have to share a file and the other side doesn't need an AutoCAD or a Revit or other Autodesk softwares to view it, 
you can store that on drive and the other side the person can just simply view it on an internet explorer ipad or a mobile device uh, on that so this allowed us to access our file anytime anywhere we required and this was further developed into a tool which is bim 360 and what this bim 360 allowed us is when we were able to save this file on a cloud system we allowed collaboration between teams so people across different locations can connect to each other using bim 360 team so specifically this was designed for revit so if you have if you are using work sharing environment and you wanted to use files <coughs> across different offices you can use bim 360 team with collaboration for revit so that you can have one file which is stored in centralized location accessed by multiple people and you develop that project part by part and this was our first attempt to make a workflow which is cloud-based where different offices organizations with access permissions can uh, log in and contribute to a collaborative environment now this bim 360 team was last year further developed into a bim 360 series of services that we had to offer now and that is our main bim 360 doc for document management then we have glue for coordination bim 360 layout uh, for connecting with hardwares like total stations bim 360 field for field management plan for planning and building ops for operation and maintenance now with html ready file formats it also supported various customizations and connectivity with iot's that can help us integrate our model to take it to operation and maintenance but by getting an as built model at the end of uh, the construction and take it to any kind of maintenance tool or maintenance software for uh, For the later stage. So this was the capabilities that has been developed over a decade. I would suggest I would say uh, and which has which uh, which uh, which address a lot of uh, Requirement that a construction industry today requires now the concept has little bit changed in the way the data is saved with the BIM 360 platform in a convention method when we have we are using on individual files we generally request file from the other department so that we can use that reference it and do our design and similarly we share that model onto the site site people reference that model they do they mark up physically or on the pdf and send it back if they need some kind of informations or they wanted to suggest some changes uh, as per site condition but here the concept gets a little bit change we make the data as a central data that means every time from design initial design up to construction and handover we store data onto a centralized location and that data is 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 will will get added up with so much of information over the period of time that we have so many analyst analysis tools uh, that are inserted onto that we can generate out different reports and we can do multiple things throughout the data we can communicate with each other we can add comments to that we can view it we can define different user permission who can access that data and so on and these a whole part is now accessed by our pim3 uh, all autodesk products range so whether you are using autocad revit inventor civil 3d on navis work you can connect it directly to BIM 360. So there is no need to use an Internet Explorer just to upload, then download and work on that file. Uh, you will just be working on your standard tools. But when you say file open, you will have a BIM 360 uh, shortcut keys, which takes you and open the file directly from BIM 360 platform. So that's, that's uh, a continuous workflow that gets added up when using BIM 360 environment now what we have also added is the the whole bim 360 is developed under a platform called forge and that's the symbol of forge that you see here it's an orange symbol uh, you may be you may have heard about that so this is a web based program uh, web web application tool um, so it's a platform which allows you to create your own app so while we in while we add so many informations say for example site informations like how much work has been done so how many issues you have handled rfis that has been floated uh, uh, 
and submittals that has been done, review processes that you have done. So all those reportings, if you want, you can use a tool like Forge to create any kind of custom dashboard. Even though BIM 360 has its own uh, reporting tool for all those, in case if you wanted to connect your data to an external source like a sensor-based information, sensor uh, connectivity with BIM 360, you can use Forge to connect these things. So it adds added values to BIM 360. If you don't see a, a feature over there you wanted to add, you can add that. And in fact, many of our uh, partners have developed uh, we have uh, ADN partner members who have developed various tools which are right now available on our Play Store where which you can install and take benefit with. A simple example I can give is these apps like if you wanted to sync everything with your own SharePoint or a lo local official uh, drives or something, you can do that and make it a sync copy. So in a BIM 360, let's come into that particular solutions that we have. Now, this is what we have, a BIM 360 platform that you see. It has uh, multiple modules or services, I would say, which is included. One is
ಹಲೋ ಹಲೋ ರಾಜೇಶ್ ಕೆನ್ ಯು ಹೇಳಿ ಓಕೆ ಸಾರಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಸೊ ಐ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿಜುವಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ uh bim 360 has tools that uh, helps us uh, capture informations uh, uh using a handheld device and while doing that the first part is the setup of the project and this setup is mostly required to uh, work with an organization generally prefer in 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 their site so every organization has different types of generally granting based on their uh need in the project and the time in which when they want to get involved in that particular project and this is how we create a project so let's see the first part how we'll create a project it is the uh, it is the most simplest part here uh but this is also a very critical part as well so let's see the project creation part so then bim 360 we have something called account admin and in account admin we get this step so first one is the project different projects that we have the member companies and so on so if you have to add a member there are multiple ways to add a member say if i wanted to add somebody with their email id now this email id is something that we use uh, in logging with our revit and other platform also this is one single login for all autodesk accounts so if i add a member you can see i can define a role for that and also which company it belongs to and this can add a member if i want to add a member from a list like i have a company list whom i constantly work with i can add through importing a member list from a template and you just click start and upload that particular excel and it will bring down all the uh, that i need to bring in i can also add companies uh, it's very similar to uh, adding members and to start a projects i just create the projects with the project name uh, what type of project it is and when is the project start and project end date now this information is minimum it is required to start that now you can also add additional informations like project values business units your uh, time zones or address and next it will show you all the services that are available with you this will be completely based on the services that you have um, uh, asked for uh, so if you just going for doc you will see the doc if you have, if you want other services you can add on whenever you require so by default you will see none of them are added but under services we can activate one by one say i want to have document management this is the first one to start with so i can add my email ids uh, directly and you will see it will list down all the uh, options and i select onto that and say save and what it will do is it will provide me access to document management so this is what i'm adding a project admin say if i wanted to start a design collaboration and add some members over there i can add that and this will keep enabling these uh, accounts so in case if i want to add more members as a project admin i can do it here by just clicking and adding them and find um, the services the document and the uh, project name uh, with the folder structures so by default it is plan and project files which are by default available so plans are something that is used to do uh, save all the drawings related data file project file can include drawing files as well as any other files like word excel and so on now 
let us see the difference between these two plan and project uh, files that you have seen. Now, plan E will support like all the 2D and 3D models that you have. Specifically, if you have a Revit file, what it will do is it will segregate all the sheets and model files, uh, model 3D models uh, in, as an individual document. If you have a CAD file, it will convert all the layouts and model uh, space that you have into a individual documents. Similarly, like for PDF, if you have a multi-sheet PDF, it will create multi-pages uh, document, like each page will be one document and so on. Project file can include anything, including plan data with photos, Excel, other PDF, like which are non-drawing PDF, uh, into project file modules itself. Now, file uploading is really very simple. So we have three different ways with which we can upload the file and let's see one by one. So the first option is uh, uploading the file directly using the upload button where you just, it's a very easy and simple one. So you just select which file you wanted to upload and open and upload that. This is something which I'm uh, working as just a sharing. I'm keeping the file over there and saving it and what it will do is it will upload the file and once the uploading is done it will start analyzing and extracting all the sheets that are there in that particular file so what happens is when i go into the next step it will extract all the sheets and place them and you can see that it is going to extract files uh, it takes a bit of a little bit a uh, minute or two to extract that and once that is done, you will see all the one file being listed into 19 documents. That means all the sheets that are there in that particular file and down there, there is a 3D model to view. When you click onto that, you can open up the Revit model directly. Now, mind you, it's just the Internet Explorer. I'm not working on Revit or any high end tool. So in my mobile devices, I can view these things. If I specifically wanted to go to ground floor plan, I can just open up and review that ground floor plan as well and see the complete detail. So it becomes much easier for me to, to handle these things uh, in an easy way. Now the second one is the collaborative environment. Now collaboration is mostly happen when you are working on a work sharing environment in Revit and in this particular uh, a workflow you want multiple team members to access this file at any given time so what we do is we enable work sharing environment and then we locate the project where we are saving that so so what happens here is when i save this file over there this becomes a this becomes a centralized file and this file can now be accessed with all the members that are having the access to this particular project. So this now becomes a centralized file and this again gets stored in my BIM 360 environment. So now if I have to open this particular file, I go into file open BIM 360, locate that particular folder, locate that folder, go into that particular project and then open that particular file. So I don't have to go and download that file every time. So I do it, access it directly from the uh, software and the tool. And if I have to work on that and then I can save it as a local or hit synchronize to update my changes. So anytime, every time I do a synchronize, you can see it only updates the uh, changes. It doesn't upload all the like 40, 50 MB of file. Only the changes that have been done goes there. And there is also we have provided something called a manage uh, cloud uh, manage cloud model uh, option there, where you can go and see different versions that are that you have currently, and it will show you all the versions that you are saving and synchronizing on that. Now, if you wanted to publish this model, you can just simply go and publish this model directly, and uh, view that file in your BIM 360 environment. So you just go into that folder where you have saved that particular file and then open that particular 3d model and then you see that particular model so all that you do is uh, on your bim 360 platform and then you view that model in an internet explorer so my team members are working on on this file and i, I may be on the site i can just access that file 
any time and i'm ac actually accessing the real time file that means the last save uh, part itself now another important uh, one key thing that how it handles a pdf data is really interesting so if i have to upload a pdf file a multi page pdf file which has a cad extract i mean to say when it has been exported from a cad uh, we uses a, a good ocr technologies to recognize the uh, the title blocks and it will identify the title blocks with sheet numbers automatically and you can define uh, and tell bim 360 where to look for these title blocks and what it does it it reads down the uh, pdf data and give individual sheets that particular title so here i say all my title block information in this respective area of that particular sheet i give this as a template name and then i specify where exactly i should look for number and where exactly i should look for title so here i'll say all my sheet numbers are somewhere here and then all my titles are somewhere on this part of my sheet so now you can see when i save this and i go into um, uh, my bim 360 extraction page it will extract all these documents individually with the specific number and sheet title and once you hit publish this it is going to put those 19 sheets and 19 document individually on my bim 360 so to review uh, say a, a ground floor and an elevation plan i don't have to open my entire pdf i can specifically go and you can also see the version it controls individual versions uh, if you submit that particular file uh, of say for example ground floor again it will only change the ground floor version by keeping the other same so let's see like once we have this file on us how we can control the uh, members member adding is fairly very easy if you you have uh, uh, individual settings from each folders that you can do and have uh, uh, members added onto that so in a workflow process uh, uh, permissions includes view only uh, that is they can just view the file on bim 360 or their app mobile app uh, but they cannot download it what we have also added is view plus download where they can view and then download the file then we have view upload view upload edit and a full control where you can add more members or delete members from there now we have also added something called a, a desktop connector now what this desktop connector does it it saves the file uh, uh, as a drive on your my computer so it works on an offline mode um, so anytime you are not connected you can just uh, use this to access the file in an offline mode also so desktop connectors gets automatically installed once you have the software in, uh, when they have the bim 360 and it runs on the background uh, constantly so let us see how this uh, things works uh, uh, using a desktop app so let so so the first part is like the the desktop connectors will always be logged in with your email id so so you need to ac access it with the same common email id that you have used for bim 360 and once that is done it will list down all the projects and uh, uh files that you have added and that's the bim 360 uh drive that you get on my computer and you can see all the projects that are there um, uh, on that and now if you wanted to open a specific file say for example uh, some kind of uh, uh, text file or a names work file you can just simply op open it directly from here and you can also copy paste things from other folders to this location it works as a simple drive on your machine uh, which makes it much easier for you it also handles word and other documents and if you are editing that and if you do some kind of changes onto that and then save it it very well controls the version so here i just changed the dates for that particular uh, demo and once i save that and go back into my bim 360 platform it uh, updates that into a new version so when i go okay let's see the navis work file also one example so when i go and click and open up a navis work file so it works for both Autodesk as well as non-Autodesk products. So you have your Navistock file, you open it directly from BIM 360, and then you do some kind of changes onto that, 
and save that change and that will get reflected in BIM 360 as well. So here I have a model where I want to add some markups or something like that. I'll just go and quickly use a snap uh, save viewpoint, create a viewpoint over there and then I do a quick markup over there. So door view has been created up over here. So when I save this file, it not saves on the local, but it saves on your BIM 360 environment itself. So when you go into this BIM 360 environment, click onto this plug station. So now you can see uh, when you click onto that coordination model, you will see a version two has been added. And under the save view, you can see the door that we just created is available for us to view. So, so this is a byte. It's a very nice touch that any changes that we do on Office will automatically get reflected on your BIM 360 platform as well. Now, let us see some of the key features like desktop review, mobile review, version controls, and markups that this has to offer. So, if you are doing any kind of comments, review, and markup, as soon as it is done on the on any one of the devices and you publish that it is available for rest of the team to view instantly so let's see the 2d um, uh, 3d uh, review the element properties and other things how it works so this is a bim 360 environment so when you review wanted to review something like you can have the options to see all the properties that it comes from the native file say in this example it is revit so any objects that you click you have that you have a uh, project browser so you wanted to review some specific door you can just simply click onto that it takes you right away onto that particular door you can also isolate or view only that particular selected element a basic functionality that you have we have already seen in uh, tools like Navisworks. you can cut a section in an internet explorer or uh, environment and further review it. If you wanted to measure something right over there, you can do it right in, in your app itself. So on a handheld device, on a mobile, you can measure things up and you can again control the isolation so to have a relevant information where exactly that particular uh, drawing is and what it is referencing with. So there is various good, nice, handy tools like you can rotate, cut sections at any different angles that you prefer and you can come back into the main model also. There is also model navigator where you can where you can actually um, just use the thumb to navigate yourself in that model it's like a walk and and if you are walking through any of the staircase and other it actually takes you just like a normal staircase like it doesn't uh, climb you or just take you all the way through and any sheets and other files that are related to that particular file is also available under your file tab. So this overall include everything. So when you select a specific element, it highlights on the view. If you wanted to mark something, you can do a cloud marking directly in your uh, uh, BIM 360. So it connects your 3D as well as 2D view uh, instantly. So at anywhere you say you select a uh, uh, staircase it shows you where exactly it comes on the uh, 3d model also so very easy to navigate and view informations in your model now one key part is the how it controls the files version so here you can see i have a version one of this file so if i use the first technique that means uploading another version manually so if I select a file and upload this, say in this case, a version two to show you in this particular example, what it does, it, it upload the file, identify that particular sheet that is there, and then it publish them as a new version. So if it finds out the same name has been used, it will use that as a same file and it increase the version of that. So this extraction now you will see will create a V2 of the same sheets that that are published now in this case if you add additional sheet or if you remove some sheet that sheet will remain as it is and if a new sheet is added it will be version one and th this controls the file which have been stored in bim 360 in a very effective way as well so this will work with also with the collaboration model so if you have a collaborative model which we just uploaded through revit using that so 
what happens is if I do any changes in this, say for example, I wanted to change this gondola and I change this to 400 mm one thick ones and I wanted to change this to 15 by 60. And now if I save this file and synchronize it, it will create now another version on my BIM 360 and monument. So all I have to do is save this as a new version and make sure it is published to the rest of the team that is on the BIM 360. Now then BIM 360 will have another version and I will be able to uh, control these versions on BIM 360 effectively. So now let us see on, uh, on, a, on a handheld devices, you will see all the versions at which version you are currently in. By default, it will always show you the latest file. You can see the latest version. You can zoom in, zoom out, and review this file. If there are any sections, it will highlight that. It's a hyperlink, so you can review that section uh, and, and add markups and review it on your uh, handheld devices also. You can also see relevant sheets for that. And if you wanted to create some kind of issues, you can create it directly over there, have uh, cloud markups and other things directly done in your handheld devices also. Now the next one is if when we have these models, how we can have a comparison done on that. So every model that has more than one version can then be connected to compare. So say for example, if you have a PDF files and you wanted to compare these PDF files, you can just select onto that. It will be a very generic comparison. That is a 2D line comparison in two different colors to show you what are the changes that has been done on these two files. So this is purely a PDF file. And what it is showing you is the changes that has been done on these files from version one to version two. So version one is blue and the version two is uh, red. You can also have a slider to see a change in that drafting or you can use the color code to see the color differences between these two files. We also do comparisons to the 3D model. So if you have, if you are working with uh, Revit, uh, when you click on, on, the, uh, on the version tab, what it will do is it will show you a different comparison option with all the versions that are available from day one. So let's see. So we go and click onto this version tab, which is the V3 here. Now you can choose which version you wanted to have comp get compared. And once that is done, it shows you how many things have been added, how many are removed, and how many have been modified. You can also categorize them with architectural structure and uh, uh, plumbing, electrical items, so that you can really filter this down. And these changes also list down the area and volume of change, specifically for wall and other things wall floors will show you how much area is getting affected or how many volume is getting affected with that you can also export this to an excel for a reporting purposes like elements that has been modified changed or added and how much area and volumes are getting uh, affected by that particular change in a 3d model so the next is uh, about the uh, rf fiber flow so what we have is a two two point that means a creator, manager, reviewer, and then goes back into the manager and reviewer, or we can have a four step uh, RFI process. And then along with RFI, we have the uh, approval workflow where we can have uh, up to six step approval with multiple approval processes. Now the approval process is fairly very simple. What we need to do is uh, we need to add uh, who should be the reviewer who can initiate that and if that particular documents get approved what the following action should be whether it should save onto a different location which i can share it with the rest of the other uh, uh, team which needs that approval document and so on so let us see how how this thing works it's a very simple step like first is you submit that select the folder in bim 360 you select submit to review and what type of approval process that you wanted to use and then just submit that now, submitting a document is very easy. Just locate that particular folder in BIM 360. Like you see here, I go into my project. Oops, sorry. I just clicked it wrong. So, okay, let me just show you the review part. So, uh, reviewing is fairly very simple. Just select onto one of the uh, 
files that you wanted to review uh, click on to the approval process that you wanted to use and then just select uh, the documents if you wanted to add some additional document you can add it here and write some notes for the reviewer to review it and it will automatically go either to the uh, role or the individual members that you have defined in the uh, project so now if that particular person logs in or he gets an email he clicks onto that he will see all the reviews that has been assigned to him for approval he can open these files and start a review by opening these documents and seeing all the um, details that has been done on that and he can either uh, accept it or reject it. If it gets rejected, it will go back into back to the uh, 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 organizer. And if it is approved, then it will go into the next level. That means the second level of approval. So if we, you can add a, a comment and uh, notes over here, and that data that whatever comments you're doing will get uh, published or stored in that particular file which you can communicate it further now once these uh, markups are done and there are certain concerns on that you can click onto that and say submit this data like say approve with a uh, comment and what it will do is it will now submit this document to the second reviewer whoever is included onto that by clicking submit it goes and submit these files over there now last one like in this particular approval is the owner it goes to the owner now owner can also be a part of pim 360 for a specific access specifically for reviewing or approving certain uh, document and once they review the documents you can see here they will see all the um, uh, uh, comments and markups that particular mem uh, the previous members have done they can review all these files and sheets and based on that they can say whether it is approved or rejected and if it is approved i can put these document into a specific folder and once it is approved it will also have an approved tick mark on that particular drawing stating that this particular set of drawing has gone through an approval process and so on and these data can now be extracted at any given time you want a report out like whether what documents have gone through what type of approval process who has approved it these will be all recorded into the sessions part of it. Now, <clears throat> once we have these documents with us, there are two things that we can really uh, work around. So one is we have multidisciplinary uh, files. We can select which files we wanted to run clashes at any given time. So this will do a kind of work job as we, when we do. So we can select files and do a live clash. As people are doing changes and saving the last publish, I can run a live clash detection between any set of document. I can load one, two, or three. And you also get this Gantt chart where it will show you respective to those two files, what are the clashes that it is going to have. And here you can see it is very an intelligent clash. That means it groups clashes together. So if you have, it knows like if you solve, uh, it can be assigned to a specific person. And if one of the walls are adjusted, it is going to resolve those 25 clashes together so the last but not the least is the uh, part that i wanted to mention today is use of total station uh, from bim 360 as i mentioned like bim 360 now supports uh, enables the html format for the file it can now be connected with various hardwares uh, with minimum adjustment and uh, changes now how this layout works is a very simple process so you have your model whether it's a Revit file or it's a Navis work file that you have. And then <clears throat> that file can be exported to Total Station. And once you have, uh, once you do the job, and if you wanted to bring something from site, uh, you can capture it from Total Station and then bring that back into your uh, Revit as well. So let's see the process. It's fairly very easy one. So this is a tool that is used. It's ordered as point layout. What it does is places the point based on the requirement. So here it's a center of wall that you see. Now this uh, points are automatically placed on all the center line of that particular wall. And now say if I wanted to do something different like this particular opening, I wanted to have uh, coordinates created. Uh, I can say face point and uh, probably on the edge. 
<coughs> and then I can say uh, automatically place these points and give it a description like this is wall opening. And when I start selecting those edges, it is going to place coordinates at the end of these openings. So you can see I, I'm getting points <coughs> with coordinate data on those critical points. Now these are the points that I can X, Y, Z coordinates that I can share with total stations that uh, on site I can use and uh, use for accurate construction. Now, once these points are all laid out, I can use my Autodesk point layout to export these points. Now, while exporting, I just have to make sure what point export order I should use, uh, what type of points I should take. Like I have given different point descriptions, I can select that. Uh, it's always export to a CSV file and I can specify the coordinate system whether I'm using the global coordinate systems or a local system coordinate system I can specify that and then <coughs> tell exactly where the file should be placed and what should be the name of that particular file so here I select I want to take all the walls cutouts <coughs> and then export that what it will do is it will export these things into a CSV file and if you are using BIM 360, it will store that point layout in your model. Now, once we are saving using BIM 360, it will list down onto BIM 360 coordinate. And what we can do is select this point and assign it to a specific member uh, who is handling total station. Now, this person, once he comes to the office, uh, he'll see an um, email notification that he has been assigned with uh, specific points. When he clicks onto that, it shows exactly where these points are. Now, he can use iPad to connect with the total station either to Wi Fi or Bluetooth, whichever model it selects, and then it becomes the data collector for, for the total station. And it not only just gives a 2D information about the coordinate, but it also shows in a 3D model which point we are actually plotting. So it, it gives a better understanding of the entire layout and the and the points that we are constructing on site so our pcl construction we have a success story out uh, with them they were the first to use that on one of their project and <coughs> they were also able to bring information back from site back into the revit now once you have construction you can also import files i'm sorry uh, coordinate points from site and then compare how accurately that has been done so whether there is any discrepancies or any kind of changes um, uh, i'm sorry any kind of uh, mismatch with the current uh, proposed design so here in this example you can see all the points are laid out perfectly but specifically in this example you can see that opening that i have is not exactly as per design the construction one is somewhere uh, way down so it also have a compare point buttons on top which can show you how much it is um, off with what is the dimension it is off with and it gives me a clear idea as to whether uh, I should it should be approved or it needs to be reworked on that so just last month we have also added something called BIM 360 layout for Android so you don't need to have an iPad right now so uh, this month early this month we uh, we launched BIM 360 layout for Android so even an Android handheld device can now be used with total stations to connect with uh, BIM 360. And last but not least is a dashboard. That is the collection of all the information that we have done in BIM 360 to be brought in into one single page. And that will connect almost with, not only just with the information that we have on BIM 360, but also with other information like camera and other statistics so it is fairly very simple to do a quick example is uh, the way this dashboard can be done it works on something called card library so if you wanted to bring any specific card library here you can see i wanted to bring a view of that particular model itself so i can just copy paste the url of the bim 360 here and what it will do is it will give me a, a brief view of the project in my dashboard so this dashboard you can see it's a card so I place my model right over there and here itself I can see how many issues and uh, markups which are 
running on. So you can see when I click onto that, you can see the orange ones are the issues, blue ones are RFIs. So I can really understand how many communications are still on on that particular model. Uh, blue ones, I'm sorry, blue ones are answered. So I, I know the orange ones are still active and the blue ones are solved. So very get, well get an idea of the running issues in the whole project. I also see a detailed chart on the project issue on the right side, a detailed chart on project checklist, how much I've been scheduled, how much I've been done and so on and open RFIs and submittals. And this view also helps me to review my model directly on my dashboard itself. So on a project dashboard, you can see I can review my floor plans uh, individually and floor wise, I can see issues and uh, markups that are there. And whatever I can do on, uh, on a BIM 360 platform, I can do in this particular uh, card itself. Now, there are other cards. So in case if you are using some uh, uh, tools like Power BI, uh, which is uh, additional uh, uh, third party tool, uh, you can for issue tracking or something like that, you can just bring that Power BI app and link it with the partner URL. And what it will do is whatever informations you're tracking in Power BI can now be used, uh, can be viewed in our project dashboard. Another thing that Autodesk has tried with Oxblue, this is a camera integration. So if you keep a camera on site, you can even bring that into your uh, project dashboard and see uh, say timeline or a library live feed from a site to understand uh, how the process is going on and so on in your site. So there is a lot of uh, enhancements that you see or on a daily basis that that is happening on on these teams. And finally is the integration part. That means uh, BIM 360 is very well, as I said, open for uh, integration. We use BIM 360 Forge to do that. And currently, if you go into our BIM 360 app, you will see multiple tools available right at this particular stage. Uh, one of the examples that I'm showing is CloudSphere, which allows you to transfer files from uh, uh, BIM 360 to any of your uh, data management, uh, like SharePoints, OneDrive, and so on. So it just maps information from one to another. There is also something called on target app which is available which is 4d simulation it's a little bit interesting tool that it allows kind of uh, uh, bim 360 data to add some additional properties attached to that uh, mainly whether it is completed incomplete active inactive and so on and this allows me to have a color code on my uh, project showing how much work has been done, how much is pending, how much is inactive, and so on. So when I say door panel of this particular thing, you can see I get a percentage slider, how much work has been done, what date it is, and I can then say active, completed, no status or inactive. I can just color code them and see it in my dashboard. A very easy tool because on, on a handheld device, you can capture it from site and review it on your whole dashboard so this is the whole platform that i have which i wanted to present today bim 360 platform consists of uh, these uh, four units one is the bim 360 doc which is just purely document management and if you wanted to collaborate with the uh, revit uh, users we required bim 360 design now we have bim 360 collaboration for civil 3d as well then we have bim 360 coordinate where you can do class detection and lastly, the BIM 360 build for project management and field management uh, included in that. So with this, I have come to the end of this session. I apologize for any inconvenience that we had uh, earlier uh, in this presentation slide. So meanwhile, if you have any of any issues uh, or any questions, you can type in into the chat or you can uh, let us know on the chat box. We can address it now.
So if there is no questions, I thank you all for joining this session. You all have a good day. Thank you. Bye.